Thanks everyone for coming and also thank you very much to the uh, ISD for organizing this uh, exciting event here. So I'm glad to share uh, one of our team's uh, uh, recent uh, effort in using big geospatial data for analyzing home mobility. And I want to share some challenges and also our approach that we uh, have been developing here. So uh, I was in this slide. The first, the first slide I have here is showing uh, a night light imagery uh, using remote sensing here. Uh, so this map, I think most of us are familiar with. This is uh, obtained from NASA. And, uh, and then the other map I want to show in here is this one, still a word, 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 uh, word image. So I think my question here, I want to ask the audience, maybe you can recognize what this map is about. It's very similar to the first one, but this, man, this map is actually uh, it's, uh, using uh, thorough sensing or it's the geotech twist that we map the world. I don't have any back background uh, my boundary in this map is all purely this kind of uh, data points, uh, po uh, you know, mapped on this uh, using lateral longitude coordinates here. So uh, actually, my lab had been streaming the, the data since 2015. We got uh, billions of tweets so far, and this is only for one year data I'm showing up here. So give me a second. I think something is blocking my view here. All right. So, uh, so geotech twist, as I showed you in the previous image, is only one type of the, of the geosocial data we are uh, going to talk about here today. So the geosocial data is referred to, uh, if we want to give it a definition or refer to the geographic, geographically referenced information generated by human activities uh, through different mechanisms. So for example, through the social media platforms like Twitter and like Weibo that we have been using, uh, the data and the mobile devices with the opt-in uh, opt mobile apps uh, like Google Maps and many other kind of apps they have. Ask permission for user when you do that. If the user give the permission, that's kind of opt-in op opt um, behavior. And then that app start to collect the location data. Like safe graph data basically is using this kind of approach to get data from uh, about population movement. And then some other location where application generated data like tax trip data, uh, trip data, smart car data for the tr uh, public transportation and others. So uh, at the bottom, I'm showing you some examples. The first one is, as I showed you before, is a 1.5 billion uh, geotech twist. And then the second one showing the over 1 million uh, visitation flows from the home block group to over uh, 3,000 fast food restaurant. Uh, in South Carolina, uh, in one month, this is only for one month. And then the third one we have is we uh, 1.3 billion uh, taxi drop-offs uh, in the New York City metro area. So those are some examples of geosocial data and uh, all this data, they contain some kind of digital geography fo geographic footprint um, by, the, by, by the users, like the like social media user or cell phone users or like other kind of like smart car users here. So we can use this information to mine, uh, to extract human mobility, and this referring to the human mobility an analytics in this big data uh, era. And uh, so next, uh, with this data here, and I just show you the example, they are a typical, uh, typical geospatial or typical type of geospatial big data or big data here in a large kind of spectrum. And we have, uh, and then they share the same uh, characteristics at least from some perspective, like the volume, uh, the velocity, variety, and veracity of these challenges as the big data. Uh, for the volume, we know that the data is big, which is which is a very fundamental uh, challenge when we're dealing with the big data. And then the velocity is the speed, data accumulation speed, the data streaming coming in is very fast. And then we have multiple data, source, uh, data sources the format and the data is kind of noisy and the quality is low, those are the worst, worst issues. So when analyzing the human mobility from those kind of big data here or big geosocial data here, uh, our goal is to extract the value from this data, which here uh, refers to the human mobility, the, uh, the trends, the patterns and association that uh, association with other kind of factors that we can get from those data here. So to to, uh, to extract this value or to analyze this patterns, trend, and association, we are facing some challenges. Uh, the first challenge 
uh, I call it a computational challenge, which is mainly referring to the volume, uh, the velocity, and the variety of the three ways of big data. So in terms of data management, uh, uh, processing, analysis, you know, uh, mining and modeling, and also virtualization. And or we can summarize those uh, computational challenges into five, uh, five or I call it accessibilities or access. It's accessibility, data accessibility, uh, computing scalability, and data uh, interoperability, and also the result, the analysis reproducibility, and finally the data shareability or the result shareability. And uh, so this is from computational perspective. And also we have only using the big, big geosocial data for the human mobility research. And the other challenge that we are always facing or being questioned by, uh, by, by, by reviewers or is the, the bias issues or the representative issues of the data. I mean, are the data able to uh, represent the whole population? And uh, if you are analyzing the disparity, the bias, something, uh, you know, that might cause some uh, unintentionally uh, uh, consequences if the data is biased or is not representing the whole population. And this is mainly referring to the veracity issues or challenging of the data. We have low data quality, which is different from the traditional data sources that we have uh, our good quality control. And we can, in a survey, we can try to make sure the data is, when we design a survey, we can make sure the data is, is, is uh, representing uh, the whole population uh, in a way. And finally, uh, we do have privacy concerns, which is another a big issue uh, in when we are using this data for human mobility analysis. Uh, the privacy concern because we have this, think about the, the subjects we are analyzing here, human mobility and their location. Um, and we, especially when we are analyzing the data or the individual data that we have here or the data with exact latitude longitude coordinates that will raise the privacy concerns. So. Those are the general challenges that we are facing here. So today, in my talk, I'm going to uh, uh, first using one of the systems that we recently developed called Original Destination Time Flow Platform uh, to showcase how we can address the computational challenges uh, from different perspectives. And next, I'm going to and then I'm going to quickly go through uh, to 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 uh, mention one of our uh, efforts in understanding the bias or the representative issues of this data. Uh, two data types, one is a geotech twist, the other one is a, a cell phone data or like using a safe graph data example. And the privacy issue will be addressed by Professor Go, as you can see from the title later in, 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 uh, in the following talk. So this is the architecture of the, of the ODD flow platform that, uh, that we developed. So at the center of the, the architecture, you can see here is the ODT cube, which is a place-based data model designed to work with the HPC to efficiently, efficiently manage a query and aggregate the billions of ODT flows at different spatial temporal scales. And, uh, and then by integrating this uh, ODT cube with the big data computing cluster on the left side, you can see we are, we are able to enable the scalable big data processing. Uh, which address scalability issues and uh, by integrating the human mobility extraction algorithms based on different data sources, uh, we enable the different uh, different uh, enable different data source integration at different or various spatial temporal scales. And uh, we do have a spatial web portal here, which enables the interactive data access and, and visual analytics. And uh, on the right side, you can see we also have API uh, or application programming interface that enables the rep reproducible analysis workflow. So uh, in the next, I'm going to show you uh, some of the, uh, the, the te techniques in more detail and also some demos of this uh, application of the system here. So this uh, here shows the four application scenarios uh, illustrating uh, how the o ODT cube, which is in the, in the center of the data model coupled with HPC, and the traditional data cube operation, uh, which can help us to analyze this big mobility data uh, in scale, in parallel. So we, all this analysis you can think, think is powered by a big data computing cluster, uh, which is a test bed cluster in, uh, hosted in my lab here. And then uh, with this cube here, ODT, original destination time, we can do a different, uh, the traditional data cube operation like slice, and then we do temporal aggregation, 
uh, we can produce a spatial pattern map, uh, show the mobility of uh, for a specific time period, uh, like a month or a year or one day. And if we slice the, the cube in this way vertically, um, from spatial aggregation, we can uh, we can produce a daily movement from a specific place. Uh, from, like we can then get a chart like this one, and then we can also do a dice operation and then do perform a temporal aggregation. Uh, aggregation we can pro we can produce a OD matrix that we can uh, you can visualize in this way or finally. Do the dice operation in this way, we can extract the data as a CSV file and then download the data for, uh, you can use that for our analysis. So based on this, uh, we uh, computed the daily flows for uh, two years using the worldwide geotech twist. Um, and also we compute the flows uh, using the mobile location data from the safe graph data from safe graph company. And this table shows the, currently the, the flow that we have uh, for the two data sources here, I can see uh, here we have the flow at different geographic scales, uh, country level, um, uh, you know, workforce level subdivision, uh, like the state level, and uh, and then we have state level and county level and also center track level. And at each of the level, we have number of flows so far for this during this time period that uh, that we have extracted here. And uh, now at, I will talk about a little bit more later. We are working on expanding these uh, data sources um, uh, by adding more columns here uh, in this data, in this platform, and also expanding the, the temporal coverage for uh, this Twitter data and CIPRAF data. So uh, that's our uh, something that we're doing right now. And uh, the portal that I show you in the, in the architecture, we have interactive uh, spatial web portal. They say the interface uh, for the for the web portal here is it is used for on demand uh, querying, aggregating, and visualizing uh, the spinning level OD flow that I showed you before. We are querying all this data here, and then uh, on the left side you can select different data sources to different geographic level that you want to analyze. You want to download or visualize here, and then choose what you want to do with the data, like visualize or download. And those currently we have some basic function here, but definitely we are continuing improving this. And uh, this is the interface. So I'm going to just uh, quickly go to use two examples to demonstrate how we can use this explorer to quickly explore um, some use some interesting patterns. So this four maps here shows the impact of the pandemic on the daily population mobility at different spatial scales. You can see this country level and county level, track level, and also this track level and for two multiple location here. I'm not going to go through each of that, but you can see the pandemic here is definitely making a very uh, uh, clear impact uh, for uh, most of the places here during that time period. All right, and uh, so we can also use this one uh, use this one to download the data directly, and then once data is downloaded as CSV format, you can just uh, directly plug the data into other applications. Here I'm using Kepler GL to visualize this, uh, this pattern, uh, this flows in different uh, different ways. And the, the, the REST API or the API, we can use that to access data programmatically uh, by writing a Python code or other kind of uh, language code here. And the, the API document is available in the GitHub. So anyone can go there, take a look. And just quick uh, user cases that we can use API. For example, in the uh, in the Jupyter Notebook, in this example, we are showing you uh, we can perform the viral analytics of COVID-19 impact on human mobility in France in 2020. And uh, you specify what data you want here, and then uh, you can quickly produce a map uh, on the right side like this to show the, 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 the the pattern changes or the width with the mobility change ratios at different at this specific job level. You can you can change this for us to any other country and quickly produce a very similar map. This map we produced use uh, it generated using GeoPandas, all right, just by calling the data from the API directly in the code. And we can also integrate the API with the uh, with the science data science workflow tool like Kime here. And then uh, again, you, and this part you can see that the REST API variables and the data is being accessed. And then we produce different kind of output output directly using this workflow. So this enables enables reproducibility, 
And also you can easily share this workflow with anyone that will want to, to use this data. So the platform has been uh, used by other researchers around the world. You can see here, uh, it has been uh, attract had attracted over 5,000 visitors from 69 countries and served over 3.8 billion flow extractions so far. Uh, so feel free to try it out uh, to see what you can do with the data. And also uh, uh, this data, uh, some a number of, of researchers around the world have been using this data directly to uh, of in their publications. So I'm listing some of that. So, and they are just show that this data is being used by others and uh, it's, it's pretty useful for a lot of studies. And uh, so we are, based on this, we are continue uh, developing the, the platform. Uh, so what we want to do uh, in the next here is first extend the spatial temporal coverage of flow extracted from Twitter and the safe graph. So we are going to, uh, 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 to 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 add flows, uh, Twitter data flow. We are going to extend it to uh, 2015 to 2020. Now we only have uh, two years, and then also for the safe graph, we are going to add other uh, e extend to other time periods and also the other locations. So here is the data source. We are going to include this uh, New York City taxi trip data for uh, a number of years, and also you uh, integrate the traditional. Um, migration mobility data from the sensors data. So it's all based on this same data model. So, and people can just go come here and uh, download the data or which right data that needed. And uh, finally, we're going to develop more APIs for the enhanced data sharing access and, uh, and for data, uh, for also for the data operability uh, by using the API here. And uh, for the that's what for, that's one of the platform that we developed to demonstrate how we can address those challenges, the competition, computational challenges uh, for this human bit data that uh, we use for in, in the studies. And then the next is I'm going to show you two quick examples of or study that we have been we worked on uh, by by analyzing or understanding the bias representativeness of challenges in uh, using the Big Geo social data. The first one here uh, is a publication that we did for uh, uh, Geotech Twist, uh, and I have a link here. And the second one, that's one of our recent study uh, to understanding the bias of mobile location data uh, across spatial scale over time, we use simple graph data here. We have a print print. So for this one, I do have two slides to quickly go through. Uh, the finding that we have here, uh, this is, uh, this chart shows us demographic social economic bias of SIP graph, SIP graph mobile location data in the 2020 at state level. What you can see uh, this data, this default different population group here, the data in that year is actually uh, uh, underrepresenting these minority groups and uh, the population with lower incomes and also uh, lower education levels. And it had very good representation uh, representation uh, or representativeness in the in female and male which is gender here. So this is for the 2020. And then we also noticed different um, bias distribution at different years and also different geographic levels. So we definitely need to be very careful in using this data uh, for studying the population movement. So especially if we look at this bias at the county level, uh, again, in 2020, 2020 uh, you can clearly see the special patterns uh, uh, of this bias. I mean, this blue color indicates... Hi, Zhen Long. Can, can yeah. you complete your talk within one minute? Yeah, yeah, that's that's the last one almost. And then uh, and then the red part is overrepresent, the overrepresent is. You can see this, uh, again, the minority group here uh, is mostly blue, and then... Uh, uh, no, blue here and lower income and also this uh, age group here. Now this is not really, now this lower education levels here. So this is only two of the studies, uh, two, uh, two of the examples that we uh, showed you here. And uh, the, once we understand the bias, the, poten the potential solutions to address the bias here, uh, I think we think that we can uh, use several approaches. One is we can conduct sensitive, sensitive analysis, and then you can apply the statistical weighting method to try to uh, correct the bias, and also to combine with data other data sources uh, to provide additional information to the to the, to the data that you are analyzing here. 
And uh, so finally, um, you know, I have to acknowledge, acknowledge the team. Without them, it's hard to, it's impossible to perform the work. And also the sponsors that uh, funding this uh, this work here. So that's it. Thank you very much.